We're about to roll the benchmarks, but it is very important to note that these two GPUs do not cost the same amount of money. So to say one is winning in performance isn't the same thing as saying it's winning in value. And I'll give a lot more thoughts of that at the end of the video. So it is very important to note that the at MSRPs, uh, the 4070 Super is supposed to be $600 and the 7800 XT is supposed to be $500. That means that the 4070 Super costs 20% more. So if you see a benchmark where it is winning by 30%, that means it's offering better value, at least in that test. Now, this happens to be a ray tracing title, despite it being a uh, AMD sponsored. So if we see other tests where the 4070 Super is only winning by 5%, that does mean it's winning, but not in value. So that'll be an important thing to note when you're interpreting the results of this video. Also, it's important to note that I have the uh, Power Color Red Devil OC version of the 7800 XT, and it is running at its out of the box settings. So this will be a little bit faster than what you would see from a reference model, for example. And I am using the 4070 Super Founders Edition at its out of the box settings. So again, if you had a factory overclocked version of this, again, a few percent differences could be noticed. And let's talk about pricing. The 7800 XT, again, should be a $499.99 MSRP, but for a long time has been selling above that. However, my hope is that launching the 4070 Super should force it back down to four, uh, you know, $500 or maybe even discounted below that. We'll have to see what happens. More thoughts on that at the end of the video. And the 4070 Super, again, it should be available at $600, at least on the Founders Edition, but will other retail models, uh, you know, hold that price? That remains to be seen. Also, if you're like, why am I not testing against, uh, you know, the, 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 you know, the 4070 and, the, you know, since that's closer in price, I just did this exact same set of games with the 4070 non-super versus the 7800 XT. So watch that video if you're more interested, because in all fairness, those are closer price competitors. So in this video, we're basically looking at, is it worth spending the extra hundred dollars or 20% for the 4070 super versus the 7800 XT? And I will be testing the latest games. And I try to go into more like settings you might actually use. We will look at maxed out settings, but also look at upscaling, sometimes turning some settings down, things like that. Some with ray tracing, some without some frame generation. Anyway, let's hop into the benchmarks. We'll give you some more final thoughts at the end. Let's kick things off with avatar frontiers of Pandora at 1080p ultra. I do think Think this is the best looking current game and it is a 30% lead for the 4070 Super in this title and 28% in the 1% lows. Both GPUs doing well though at 71 and 92 FPS average respectively. Again, this is still only 1080p resolution. Also note the big performance gap is probably explained by this being a ray tracing title. If we move up to 1440p Ultra, we see 62 FPS on the 4070 Super versus 51 on the 7800 XT. So it's dropped to a 22% lead now for the 4070 Super. Again, large lead here, but like I said, this is a ray tracing only title, uh, despite being an AMD sponsored title, by the way. And even at lower graphics settings, there's always some form of ray tracing enabled. And even on non-RT hardware capable GPUs, I believe it enables a type of uh, fallback software version of the ray tracing. But anyway, I think for a lot of people, you would kick on quality level upscaling to try to boost those frame rates a bit. I know in a first person shooter, I'd rather be around 90. And at quality level DLSS, the 4070 Super does hit 95 FPS now, which is a 34% advantage over the 7800 XT, leading me to believe that the uh, 1440p Ultra non uh, upscaled results may have been hit a bit by the VRAM capacity. Now, this is one of the only, uh, one of a few games that has FSR3 frame generation implemented. It does not have DLSS3 frame generation, but they could both use FSR3 quality upscaling plus frame generation, which we're looking at here, but I'm not giving a performance uh, uh, calculation because for some reason the AMD GPUs seem to enable VSync even when you turn it off in the game, but the Nvidia GPUs don't. Now granted you would probably want VSync on when using that, but um, 
Anyway, it just means the performance numbers can't really be compared. So anyway, another way to boost performance uh, other than upscaling would be just turn down graphic settings. How about 1440p high? Now we're seeing the 4070 Super with a 21% lead over the 7800 XT at 80 FPS versus 66 in the averages. And the 1% lows are a 22% advantage at 66 versus 54. So they're both performing pretty well there. And you could still upscale even at the high settings. And now we're getting some really nice frame rates on both GPUs. The 7800 XT can hit 88 FPS, but we're getting 31% uh, better performance, uh, which is 115 FPS on the 4070 Super. We should also note when we're looking at the upscaling, they don't produce identical image quality. If you look at the fencing, especially on the base, especially in the background, if you look at the fencing, it's very shimmery on the FSR upscale and it's very stable on the DLSS upscale. Anyway, if we go to 4K Ultra settings, neither GPU is doing a great job here. It's an 18% lead for the 4070 Super at 33 versus 28. The 1% lows are 29 and 25 respectively, which is a 16% advantage for the 4070 Super. But I think we can all agree that this isn't the way we would play the game. So one option is to enable upscaling. Here at quality level upscaling, DLSS versus FSR between the two, uh, the 4070 Super now bumps all the way up to 55 frames per second. Very playable, it's a 25% advantage over the 44 FPS the 7800 XT can you get, uh, but also it's an image quality advantage. Although quality level upscaling at 4K does work very well for FSR, there are, is still a little less stability to the fencing and fine details. If we uh, just drop down to the high setting though, rather than ultra, uh, both GPUs do a lot better than they were doing at ultra, although this is back to native resolution. We are seeing a 45 FPS result for the 4070 Super and 39 on the 7800 XT. That is a 15% advantage in the averages and we're seeing a 21% advantage in the 1% lows. Although neither GPU is a real high refrain rate experience here, so I'd probably kick on upscaling as well. And I think we finally reached the settings I'd probably actually use if I was using these GPUs at 4K in this game. The high preset plus quality level upscaling gets the 4070 Super to 70 frames per second, which is a 25% advantage over the 56 FPS from the 7800 XT. 1% lows are a 23% advantage. And again, while quality level upscaling does look good for both, I do think the fencing and things in the distant detail are more stable with the DLSS upscale. Now let's move on to probably, if you don't think Avatar is the best looking game, it's probably Alan Wake 2. And at high settings, there is no ultra, so this is the max non-ray tracing preset. Uh, we're seeing a 4% uh, lead for the 4070 Super, it's 85 versus 82, 7% lead in the 1% lows, but the image quality isn't identical. This game offers a uh, no normal just TAA option. You're locked into either an FSR or a DLSS pathway. You can run them at native resolution though. And while I could have done FSR on both, I think most NVIDIA users would use the DLAA pathway and it does look more stable. We'll see more a little more shimmering if you look at the tree branches and things like that on the left-hand side of the screen, although U2 compression does kill a lot of the differences. Uh, we're seeing a 9% advantage at uh, 1440p high settings native resolution, which is 60 FPS versus 55. In a game like this, those were probably perfectly acceptable frame rates because it's a pretty slow, uh, slow paced game, but kicking on some upscaling at the quality setting will smooth things out quite a bit. And now we're at 90 FPS without frame generation on the 4070 Super, which is a 5% advantage over the 86 FPS on the 7800 XT, as well as an image quality advantage. You also have access to DLSS 3 frame generation to further smooth things out on a high refresh rate display uh, on the Nvidia GPU. Now, if we move up to 4K resolution, neither of them do great at 4K high settings native resolution. Uh, the averages are pretty close at 32 versus 31, but look at the frame time graph on the 7800 XT. This was repeatable, and I actually saw it on other AMD GPUs tested in this area as well. They're getting pretty stuttery, and you can see a big difference in the 1% lows, a 71% advantage here, that's 24 versus 14. But they both were doing pretty bad, so why don't we kick on some quality level upscaling? Looks pretty good on both GPUs. Again, I think there's a bit more stability to the fine detail on the DLSS image and we're seeing 55 versus 51 FPS, which is an 8% advantage for the 4070 Super, although the frame time graph is still a lot spikier on the AMD GPU, 
giving a 40 FPS versus 26 FPS results. So pretty, a pretty uh, significant difference in the 1% lows. But this is a path tracing game. So why don't we test that out? Well, they both struggle at native 1080p resolution with the path tracing enabled. Although I'd say the 4070 Super is at least playable in a slow paced game at 39 FPS and the 7800 XT is down at 17. So the 4070 Super is more than doubling the performance in the averages and the 1% lows, but I don't think it's a great result either way. If we kick on quality level upscaling, which I don't like to do at 1080p, although the ray reconstruction this game does help it quite a bit with the DLSS result, uh, we're now seeing 60 FPS from the 4070 Super without frame generation, and then you could kick uh, frame generation on from there, and I think 60 FPS is a pretty good baseline to do that from. And we're still seeing basically doubling the performance at 60 versus 31 FPS in the averages. But I think most people would be buying these GPUs for 1440p, and at, uh, even with quality level upscaling enabled, neither GPU is doing great. The 4070 Super is arguably playable in a slow paced game like this at 43 FPS, and the 7800 XT is down at 21. So we're still basically doubling the performance in the averages and even more in the 1% lows, but I'm still not convinced most people would choose to play the game at 43 FPS if they had other options on the 4070 Super. So we could kick on even more aggressive upscaling. And while at performance mode, the image quality differences are even more apparent. Look at the tree branches and things like that. DLSS looks significantly better. It still doesn't look great though. So I'm not, I don't think I'd want to use performance mode upscaling myself at 1440p. That's only a 720p internal resolution, but it does get you to 57 FPS, which is then a decent base baseline to generate frames off of, so there is that. Uh, the other path tracing game we could test out is Cyberpunk. At 1080p, its RT Overdrive is showing us kind of similarly difficult results, where 40 FPS versus 20, which is again doubling up the performance uh, for the 4070 uh, Super's advantage, but still kind of not great. 40 FPS is playable, but probably not how you would want to play the game. So again, kicking on upscaling has a massive boost to frame rates, and we do get ray reconstruction, which does help that uh, 1080p upscale. I still don't like upscaling at 1080p though. If you look at things like the palm tree branches as we go by those, you'll see that they are pretty shimmery and unstable, even with DLSS upscaling here, although it does get us to playable frame rates at 76, which is then a decent baseline to generate frames off of. So the frame rates are good now, uh, not in love with upscaling at 1080p though. Uh, 1440p is the more realistic resolution for these GPUs and path tracing with quality level upscaling hits 51 FPS on the 4070 Super in this benchmark and many areas of the game are more demanding than the benchmark, especially in the new, um, new uh, update to the game. Uh, so, you know, it's somewhat usable if you wanted to, but again, I don't know, there's other ways to get much higher frame rates in the game, which in a first person shooter, a lot of people I think would choose to do. Uh, performance mode upscaling does get to a much better baseline frame rate of 73 FPS on the 4070 Super. It's still basically doubling the performance of the 7800 XT, which is hitting 36. And the uh, you know image quality differences are again, big advantage DLSS, but still doesn't look great. Again, look at things like the palm tree branches for something that comes through the YouTube compression. They're pretty shimmery. Uh, so yeah, I'm not really sold on the path tracing, path tracing performance of the 4070 Super. It is arguably usable, but not maybe the preferred way to play the games. And you could just turn off all ray tracing and at 1440p ultra, I'm actually seeing my 7800 XT uh, with the lead here at 94 versus 85. So anyway, um, uh, basically just keep in mind, you, you can just play with ray tracing turned off. Let's look at some other games though. Uh, Baldur's Gate 3 is probably the most popular PC game of the year. I did finally finish it. Man, is it a long game, and it is a great game. It's also CPU limited at 1080p Ultra in Baldur's Gate City in Act 3, which is what we're looking at here, which is why our GPUs are basically performing the same. AMD has a bit of an advantage in the 1% lows, potentially due to um, uh, differences in driver overhead between AMD and NVIDIA, where AMD t tends to have a bit of an advantage there in CPU limited situations. We're seeing almost the same frame rates at 1440p Ultra as we saw at 1080p Ultra, again, because of uh, 
uh, CPU limitations. However, we're, we're kind of right on that borderline now where sometimes the GPU is being fully utilized and sometimes it isn't. But again, I think that it that does definitely explain the basically tied performance here with a uh, slight advantage in the 1% lows versus the 7800 XT. Now the 4K results are kind of interesting. If you look at the frame time graph on the AMD GPU, there's these occasional stutters at a regular interval. It's kind of interesting and they're pretty minor, but that does lead to an advantage in the 1% lows that's pretty noticeable for the 4070 Super. Other than that though, the GPUs are basically tied and they're both giving good performance at 66 versus 69. Nice for the 4070 Super. So um, anyway, interesting result at 4K, but the, this was repeatable. I, I did always see those little, little stutters on the 7800 XT. Let's move on to another game. Starfield was another really big release in the last year, and at 1080p Ultra, they're tied in the averages, although 7800 XT actually has an advantage in the 1% lows. And, um, you know, that's uh, interesting. NVIDIA performance has improved since launch. This was an AMD-sponsored title, and NVIDIA GPUs drastically underperformed when the game launched. They have improved significantly since then, though. At 1440p ultra settings, we're seeing both GPUs tied at 69, nice. And a 14% advantage for the 7800 XT in the 1% lows. And if you hear a harmonica in the background, that's not your imagination, that is my kids playing in the room next to me. They did know they were supposed to maybe be a little bit quiet while I recorded this, but um, anyway, don't know if that picks up for you guys or not, but whatever, that's how we roll on this channel. Uh, what about uh, if we wanted higher frame rates? You could kick on upscaling. The game did not launch with DLSS, but it has since patched it in, as well as frame generation for DLSS, but not yet for FSR 3. They have promised it upcoming in patch notes, though. And again, performance levels basically tied, but now we're actually uh, you know, seeing slightly better 1% lows for the 4070 Super. About tied, though, really. They're both getting us a mid-80 performance range, but again, I would say slightly sharper image for the DLSS upscale. At 4K resolution, both GPUs are playable at 4K Ultra, but probably not what you would want to play at. We're seeing 44 FPS on the 7800 XT versus 41 on the 4070 Super, so actually 7% advantage for the 7800 XT, and a 15% advantage in the 1% lows. So a win here for the 7800 XT, but at settings we probably wouldn't want to use anyway. Uh, one way to boost performance would be to kick on DLSS or FSR at the quality level. Both of them look good at quality upscaling at 4K resolution, and now they're both hitting 60 FPS. They're also about tied in the 1% lows. Uh, you, uh, 60 FPS is a decent baseline for frame generation, so you could kick that on. Uh, and again, 60 FPS is about my limit for where I'd want to kick on frame generation. Much lower than that, and I probably wouldn't want to use it. But let's take a look at Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, one of the biggest multiplayer releases of the year. And I'm testing out at the basic settings rather than higher graphics settings, since I think that's what makes sense for a multiplayer title in most people's use case. You get the competitive edge with the higher frame rates and less clutter. Anyway, 317 versus 301 gives a 5% lead to the 4070 Super and a 6% lead in the arguably more important 1% lows. At 1440p basic settings, the GPUs are tied. Technically, it is a 1% advantage for the 4070 Super in both the averages and the 1% lows, but that's not particularly meaningful here. <laughs> so um, both GPUs definitely able to offer a high refresh rate competitive experience in this title. Uh, for sure. But what about 4K resolution? Well, even at 4K resolution, as long as you're at the basic preset, you're getting 138 FPS average, and that's true on both GPUs. However, the 1% lows are offering a 13% advantage to the 7800 XT at 94 versus 83. Um, difficult to say exactly what accounts for that since the, uh, you know, we're definitely not using more than 12 gigabytes of VRAM at the basic settings or anything like that, but that is the result that we are seeing. And let's go ahead and move to the next game. Resident Evil 4 Remake gives us a good way to test out uh, the RE engine, which Capcom uses in many of its games and will be using in many more upcoming titles. And the max settings do include some small levels of ray traced reflections. They honestly don't look that great, but they do use a lot of VRAM at these settings. But the 4070 Super is still taking an 18% lead at 148 FPS versus 126 and a 9% advantage in the 1% lows. If we move up to 1440p resolution, the 4070 Super's advantage 
is still there, but it is less. And it's possible that it's having to um, uh, deal with its VRAM situation a little bit here. As we can see, the AMD GPU is allocating more than 12 gigabytes. Although AMD does tend to allocate more VRAM than NVIDIA in a lot of situations. And the 4070 Super is still smoothly running even in the 1% lows and does still have the lead, it's just less so. And that uh, uh, I also want to test out what if we didn't enable ray tracing and the max preset because the prioritized graphics preset um, not only doesn't have ray tracing, but it's much more uh, uh, much more lenient on the VRAM. <laughs> it usually stays under eight gigabytes uh, much of the time at 1440p. And here we're saying, seeing a 3% advantage for the 4070 Super. So they're now basically tied. And again, there's no ray tracing enabled there. If we move up to 4K resolution and back to with ray tracing enabled and everything maxed out, uh, we are seeing, again, basically a tie. It's 64 versus 65 on the averages, so they're both doing well here, and the 1% lows are good at, as well at 59 and 58. Um, and again, that is interesting, and especially looking at the VRAM usage on the two GPUs. Because uh, it's possible that the 4070 Super's ray tracing performance is being held back from having a larger lead due to the VRAM usage in this game. If we turn the ray tracing perform uh, ray tracing off by going to prioritize graphics and VRAM usage comes well under 12 gigabytes on both GPUs, uh, their performance is still basically tied, although it's higher at 79 and 78 now. Um, but again, I think that emphasizes that the 4070 Super probably would have taken a larger ray tracing lead with ray tracing enabled if it had more VRAM. That's how I'm kind of reading those results. But anyway, let's go ahead and move to some Unreal Engine 5 games. This engine will be used a lot in a ton of upcoming games. And Lords of the Fallen is the most demanding one I've tested so far using this engine. At 1080p Ultra, the 4070 Super takes a 19% lead at 74 FPS versus 62. Uh, although the 7800 XT has a 4% lead in the 1% lows, those 1% lows are mostly traversal stutter as we round into a new area, and that's kind of more engine related than GPU related. If we move up to 1440p Ultra, uh, we're actually not seeing either GPU able to hit 60 FPS average in this test. It's 53 versus 45, which is an 18% advantage for the 4070 Super in the averages, although we're still seeing the traversal stutter hit us as we round this corner, uh, leading to the 1% lows being kind of compressed. But one of the big deals with Unreal Engine 5 is that Unreal Engine 5 responds extremely well to upscaling because a lot of its effects are per pixel calculated. We got Nanite and Lumen, things like that. So we're seeing a massive performance boost by kicking on quality level upscaling. The 4070 Super has a 22% lead uh, and the 1% lows are still compressed, but it's 83 versus 68 in the averages. And again, DLSS, I do think in the fine details and the trees and things like that is better image quality. Now, what if we move up to 4K resolution? Well, at 4K resolution at the ultra settings, we are not getting great performance. It's still a 21% lead for the 4070 Super, and now it's taking a lead in the 1% lows since our uh, frame rate numbers are below the traversal stutter numbers for the most part, I think, here. Um, now, realistically, you'd want to turn down settings and use upscaling, but unfortunately, I tested the upscaling at different results, uh, different settings for the two GPUs, so I can't directly... Per uh... Oh, wait, never mind. No, uh, sorry. I, I thought I didn't have the quality level upscaling on both. I actually do, so ignore what I was saying during my one-take, no-script uh, <laughs> voiceover. Anyway, at quality level upscaling, we do get up to 52 FPS versus 43 uh, which is a 21% advantage for the 4070 Super, and they are both performing a lot better. Again, it responds really well to upscaling, though realistically you'd probably want to also turn down to high settings to get the frame rate numbers where you'd actually want. But let's move on to a different Unreal Engine 5 game, which is Robocop Rogue City, and at 1080p epic settings, both GPUs are doing great. Uh, we're seeing 99 FPS versus 97, so it's basically tied. It's also basically tied in the 1% lows at 77 versus 76. So we can see that not every Unreal Engine 5 game is going to give that large performance advantage to the 4070 Super, where, again, here we're about tied. If we move up to 1440p epic settings, we're now seeing the 4070 Super at 69, nice, versus 66 on the 7800 XT. Technically, that's a 5% win. But I, I, you know, I, I think if you're running these two GPUs without frame, frame rate counters, you would be hard pressed to notice the difference. 
Um, the 1% lows are even more close at 57 versus 56, which is only a 2% advantage for the 4070 Super. However, in a first person shooter, you might wanna kick on upscaling to get better frame rates. And now I think you could tell which GPU you were using, because even though the performance is the same, Look at the fine details in the upscaling here. Look at the pavement shimmering on the left-hand side. Look at the truck grill kind of shimmering and, and unstable. Uh, this is not a great FSR upscale. This is one of the worst ones that we've seen. It's very shimmery and unstable on the FSR upscale here. So that's definitely an advantage for the NVIDIA GPU. And if we go to 4K Epic settings, Neither GPU is performing especially well, but it is a 9% lead for the 4070 Super. It's 37 versus 34, and the 1% lows are 33 versus 30, which is a 10% advantage. But again, are these the settings you're actually going to use? I don't think so. So one option is to kick on quality level upscaling. And once again, Unreal Engine 5 is showing a massive performance boost from upscaling. We're now up to 58 on the 4070 Super and 55 on the 7800 XT, giving us a 4% advantage for the 4070 Super. So I would call this basically a tie performance wise. But once again, well, at 4K resolution, the FSR upscaling is better than it was at 1440p. It still doesn't look great. So if you ask me which GPU would I rather have, the answer is unquestionably the 4070 Super with the possible caveat that, uh, you know, 16 gigabytes of VRAM versus 12 at certain graphic settings in certain games, especially as time goes on, it is possible that that will be a noticeable advantage for the 7800 XT and that the 4070 Super will need to tweak graphic settings to remain comfortably within the 12 gigabyte VRAM buffer but I would definitely rather have the 4070 Super if they cost the same, but they don't, right? So that's where we need to get into the value question a little bit. So basically in ray tracing titles like uh, Avatar Frontiers of Pandora, AMD sponsored title that only has ray tracing options, you can't fully turn it off. Uh, the 4070 Super is more than justifying its 20% price increase, uh, often 20 or 30% faster. In heavier ray tracing titles, it, uh, it uh, you know, more than justifies that. If you're talking about path tracing, it's like double the performance. However, is it the performance that you're looking for? If you're at 1440p, then with quality upscaling, your path tracing performance might not be really all that usable. And if you go down to performance mode upscaling, then maybe you're at play more playable frame rates, but I think you're losing a lot in the image quality overall. So the I'm not sure the 4070 Super is quite there for the like full on path tracing experience if you're shooting for 60 FPS or better before kicking on frame generation, which is what my personal preference is. Now, what if we're not even interested in ray tracing? So if we look through our benchmarks in non-ray tracing titles, we can often see the performance actually pretty similar. Now, Starfield is a fairly AMD, um, you know, advantaged title. It is an AMD sponsored game. And here we can see the 7800 XT matching the performance, actually winning in the 1% lows and doing it for $100 less. So the 7800 XT certainly can make a, a claim for itself. However, uh, in my opinion, then basically you get to the the issue that if I was putting together an optimized settings list for games, in other words, how would I actually play them? I would very frequently choose to enable quality level upscaling if I have an NVIDIA GPU because DLSS quality versus native resolution often looks very similar so that the large performance boost on offer from enabling it is absolutely worth doing so. Whereas with AMD, the upscaling uh, quality isn't as good. I think that we saw that most obviously in RoboCop Rogue City, which I will admit has a particularly bad FSR implementation. However, uh, it's hard to see a lot of the fine details through YouTube compression. If you watch this in motion, if you look at the fencing, the fine details in the pavement, uh, with this upscaling enabled, you see a lot more flickering in the fine details, a lot more shimmering on the pavement. Uh, there's a lot of places where on an AMD GPU, I probably would choose not to use the upscaling or it's a worse experience with it enabled. 
right? So even though they are basically matching performance here with the upscaling enabled, and they're both getting very good performance, you're having a better experience on the NVIDIA GPU. And that's before I even talk about frame generation, where I do still feel like NVIDIA's option has better frame pacing, and it is definitely still available in more games. Uh, the driver level AMD fluid motion frames is a cool feature. Personally, the quality of it isn't what I'm looking for compared to the actual inbuilt uh, in options in games um, with DLSS 3 and FSR 3. So what am I getting at here? Basically, Yes, sometimes the 7800 XT can match the performance of the 4070 Super for $100 less. So if you are looking to save some money in your build, that might be the right choice for you. If uh, you can barely fit the $500 GPU to get a reasonable CPU, then maybe that is the best choice for your build. But if you have that extra $100 in your budget, you're basically getting the same rasterized performance and sometimes better. Uh, uh, from the 4070 Super, and you're getting significantly better ray tracing performance if you care about that. And I think we will start to see more and more games featuring meaningful ray tracing implementations, as we're seeing here in Avatar Frontiers of Pandora, for example. And like I said, uh, a lot of engines are very reliant on upscaling at this point. For example, Unreal Engine 5 games get a massive performance bump from quality level upscaling. Where we're seeing here, we're going from 45 and 53 respectively at Lords of the Fallen 1440p Ultra, uh, jumping all the way up to um, 68 and 83 respectively from enabling that quality level upscaling. That's going to be a very big deal in Unreal Engine 5 games, and there's going to be a lot of Unreal Engine 5 games. So with that in mind, um, I do definitely think the 4070 Super is the better graphics card, and if you have the, that extra money in the, the upgrade budget, I do think it's definitely an upgrade. Again, with that possible 16 gigabyte of VRAM being the only real advantage for the 7800 XT besides its $100 lower price tag. It is nice to have a $100 lower price tag though, so absolutely factor that into your decision. And the closer priced GPU from NVIDIA to the 7800 XT is the 4070 non-super, which I did just test this exact same set of games uh, uh, again with the, um, sorry, uh, this one, here we go. I tested this exact same set of games with the 4070 versus the 7800 XT non-super variant here. So, so keep an eye on that for sure. And if you're choosing between the 4070 and the 4070 Super, I did, again, test the same suite of games, uh, 4070 versus 4070 Super, so you can take a look at that and decide what you think there. Uh, long story short, uh, if the MSRPs hold, the 4070 Super is better value if you have the extra 50 bucks. So what I'm hoping actually comes out of all this is that the 7800 XT force, uh, gets its price forced down a bit. Uh, we saw this happen to NVIDIA when the 7800 XT came out. When the 4070 non-super was $600 and the 7800 XT launched at $500, it offered a significant enough uh, performance increase along with more VRAM and more value uh, that you know it forced NVIDIA's pricing to go down. I would hope that the 4070 Super doing something kind of similar, although coming at it from above rather than below, I'm hoping that puts downward pressure on both the 7800 XT and the 4070 non-Super. So it might be worthwhile seeing how this month plays out because uh, we're gonna be getting the 4070 Ti Super as well as the 4080 Super, which should also be putting a lot of pressure on AMD's higher end 7900 series products. So it would be really nice if we see some top-down pressure on uh, GPU pricing overall, which could shake things up. But if we're looking at, uh, you know, which would you rather have, a 7800 XT versus a 4070 Super, you can see my vote is on the 4070 Super. And yes, it is possible that you'll have to tweak settings to stay within 12 gigabyte VRAM buffer at some in some games in the future. Yes, but other than that, it's a better GPU and um, sometimes significantly so, especially when you're using ray tracing. All right, hopefully you guys found the video useful and or interesting. And a uh, huge thank you to channel members who have hit the join button to directly support the channel financially because wow, when I'm running this many tests, 
it can get a little bit exhausting, but knowing I have the support from you guys is, it helps me get through all of that. <laughs> anyway, stay tuned to the channel. I have run a bunch of other comparisons for this uh, same set of games. Some interesting ones for the 4070 Super I'll be looking at soon are like the 3070 Ti, which was the previous generation G NVIDIA GPU at this price point, as well as cards like the 3090. NVIDIA is claiming that their 4070 Super beats it. That'll be an interesting comparison, and I've run those benchmarks as well. I just takes a while to edit together the side-by-side -side footage. And again, a bunch more benchmarks coming out um, next week for the 4070 Ti Super and the week after that for the 4080 Super. So stay tuned to the channel, and I hope all of you have an excellent day.